It's nothing. Give it to me. Sir, this man has a dagger. See, sir? So, you have a dagger. What's your job? A hunter. Well, that's obvious. What is it you hunt? Wild dogs? Or is it Roman soldiers? You mean there's a difference? You swine! Don't do that again, Corporal. Get here. Let him go. What did you say? You heard me. Let him go. It seems I must arrest a crazy priest as well. Is that right? That depends on who the crazy priest is. A local commoner. Or an Empire citizen. You're boasting. You appear to be nothing more than a common Pharisee. And you don't look brave enough to be behaving thus in front of the General Procurator of Antioch. It is in your best interest to finish this right now. This is not Antioch. This is Judea! Yet your great master, General Pilate, operates under the jurisdiction of the General Governor of the Empire in Damascus. You know this well, soldier. I'm not looking for any trouble. You can take him. Go on. It appears Judea has its own rules. Go on. But listen to me. Carrying a dagger is forbidden in Judean territory. I'll return this. But you must remember, a Jew with a dagger is considered to be a zealot. You don't have the face of a zealot. But you have the bitter tongue of one. You were lucky the gentleman interceded for you, or you'd wind up in the dungeon of the fortress of Antonia. Lady, your face. Uncover it for me. Now. Where are you going? To Magdala. Magdala? But this road goes to Jerusalem. Tell the truth. What is your destination? I see you're not afraid of them. Where is your husband? I said, your husband? Where is he? I'm unmarried. How could a beautiful woman like you not have a husband? Perhaps you should watch with whom you travel. And you'd better watch yourself, or you might end up in a worse situation. Why now are you blabbering? Have you ever heard of Colonel Cornelius? Of course I have, so what? He is in love with this woman. If he were to find out you'd been bothering her, your life wouldn't be worth living. It seems today is not your lucky He's day, right, Corporal. Corporal. Let them go. Look at her face. Her eyes. She doesn't look like a commoner. I'd say she belongs to a noble family, and Colonel Cornelius may really be in love with her. If the carriage driver is telling the truth, then... Bothering this woman may ruin her lives. You know, I think that... You're right. Yes. Let them pass. If this didn't have something to do with... The High Commander, 
I swear this. I wouldn't let them leave so easily. I know, sir. You may go. Move along. Why are you staring? What is the matter, young rebel? I don't know which to hate more, a Roman legionnaire. Or a Hebrew who takes pride in being a Roman citizen. Well, to me, it's all the same. Perhaps you'd prefer to be locked up in the dungeon of General Pilate's fortress. You're not really a zealot rebel, are you? Yes. I don't understand. Why do you want to kill Romans? Why shouldn't I? They've occupied our land, the sacred land of David and Solomon. These names are meaningless to someone like you, right? You can't fight them. They have the most disciplined army, which means Their disciplined that... army can go to hell. Makes no difference if we can fight them... If we can't fight them, we will at least make their lives miserable. But what is the reason for doing that? To make way for the savior of the children of Israel. The savior of the children of Israel? You do not believe in this miracle? Even though you are a Pharisee? It depends on who does this miracle. A prophet. A prophet of the children of Israel. The one who can throw the Romans out of this place. It's been 60 or 70 years since Julius Caesar annexed this land to the Roman Empire. Not a day goes by in the land of Palestine on which some ambitious swindler or a deluded religious bigot does not gather together a group of desperate people to be massacred by the Romans. And they all claim the same thing. That they were God's promised savior. The promised one. I am sick of these charlatan saviors. You're a denier. A denier? That just depends on who it is I deny. Deny the false saviors whose... whose only ambition is to conquer Jerusalem and establish a rustic monarchy? Yes, I will deny such saviors. All of them. So, what do you think the main goal of the savior should to be? To rid us of the Romans. The conquest of Rome. And then what after Rome? The conquest of the entire world. I'll say it again. We have to keep We're trying. We're tiring ourselves uselessly. There's nothing to catch. Throw the net. It's useless. Tell that to Zebedee. We're wasting our time. What are you waiting for? Take them! Go on, take them! Go out again!
father is angry with everyone today. Do you even know what you're doing? I've tried to explain it to your stubborn father. You should take it up with him. Ay, ay, ay. The money we'll get from this fish won't even cover the cost of the workers' salaries, let alone the tax for the damn Romans. Grandfather, why are there so few fish? Because the sea has deserted your old grandfather. May I go to the sea and mend the quarrel between you? to mend the quarrel. I've already told you not to listen to fishermen's stories. Angels. These days, people don't even believe in prophets, let alone in angels. Caught hardly anything since this morning. This ocean is cursed. Pray. Pray? For what? It won't make our catch any bigger. I said we should pray. That won't help us. Zebedee wants fish, not prayer. No fish, no wage. If there's no fish, the Romans will take the old man's nets and boats as their tax. Don't you understand that? There's a net thrower. Just what I wished for. Who is he? Jesus. He's the son of Mary. I saw him in the temple. I'm sure it is he. He's like light. A nephew of your former master John. Greetings to the Galilee Prophet. Get back to work. You've returned empty-handed. Enough times already. If it's fish you're wanting, then have these here. Or perhaps you've come to watch the misery of the fishermen. You can see our situation. Zebedee. He's Jesus, the son of Mary. We have no need for any healing here. There's nothing for you here. If you're wanting fish, well... I have not come here to catch fish. My great lord, please, pray for us. And maybe our catch will become plenty. 
Pay no attention to Zebedee. He is upset. Yes. I think you were right. Master, please forgive us. We've heard much about your words, Master. I will pray. Yet I am a man of action, not just prayer. And all I see is misery here in this land. Master, let us go fishing. Were well, you not listening to a word I said? The sea has deserted us. I warn you, your going will be useless. <laughs> it's, it's full, full of, fish. of fish! Thank you, Jesus. Jesus has caught both my children and my workers. How are you, Zebedee? From now on, I'll have to work alone. They have found their path. Would you deny them that? Pray for us, Father. Forget this old man. Thus, Simon, known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, together with Zebedee's two sons, John and Jacob, joined the apostles of the Son of Mary. I want you to look at this document. I've already examined it, Judas.
What are you looking at? Who's she? Ah, my cousin has good taste. That's the woman you saw yesterday. Don't talk nonsense. I mean, do you know who she is? Everyone knows who she is. Her name's Mary. She's not from around here. She's from the north. Somewhere around Galilee. Herod's territory. She's a noble rich woman. I've seen her somewhere before. Who's that Roman? Do you know him? Of course I know who he is. He's a guard officer. His mission has just ended. He's to return to Antioch, but... But his love for her has crippled him. She has many such mad lovers. They're crazy about it. Yet she refuses them all. People say she's demonized. Demonized? Yes, demonized. I'd like to say, though, I've never seen such a delectable, demonized woman. Perhaps you'd like to try your luck. She might like an absent-minded philosopher. <laughs> Stop your nonsense. <laughs> How long will you be staying here? Jerusalem holds no attraction for me. I return to Alexandria as soon as I finish my calculations. Then I expect you'll definitely see it. The woman? I mean the wandering teacher. They call him Jesus of Nazareth. If you see him, you can be even more deluded. What kind of person is he? Someone like John the Baptist. The same John they took to Damascus last year and beheaded because of his dispute with Herod? Yes. This man is a prophet as well, is he? Probably. Is he or is he not? I've heard some say he is a prophet. There are many stories about him. Others say that he's a sorcerer. And the high priests, they say he's crazy, a demagogue. Craziness and demagoguery can't exist together. Who is that man? Well, that's he, the one I spoke of. I think he's returning from one of his journeys to Galilee. Whenever he comes to Jerusalem, there's trouble. Nobody knows if he's a preacher or a rebel. But if you ask me, you're here to meet him. Why are you here anyway? I think you're in danger. Is Jesus of Nazareth a follower of John? No. John gave glad tidings of his coming, and he said to us, He is more exalted than I, and now he is among you. And why does he look as he does? Master, it is an incurable ailment. She is unable to talk since birth, nor can she hear the words I speak. Please bless her for the sake of your pure mother. Help me. O oh, benevolent and almighty Lord, hear my request and grant health to this girl. Amen. Can you speak? Say something! Oh! 
Jesus! The son of Jesus. Mary healed her! My sister's talking! She's you did it. talking! Say Jesus. something, my dear! Jesus! Jesus. Yes! Jesus. It's a miracle! Will you answer it? Do only the blind or lepers deserve your blessing? That is not so. Do you have a request? People say that I am demonized. For as long as I can remember, I'm anguished all the time. I've demons living inside my soul. All the time I am restless. My soul is constantly tormented. People say I'm homeless due to my constant traveling to various lands. I am unable to settle. Why am I like this? Am I demonized? Am I crazy? I left home a few years ago. I walked through the desert aimlessly for many nights. They hurt me. They never leave me alone. They never leave me alone. Mary Magdalene, if he can heal Magdalene, then we can say that miracles happen in this town. Jakob will turn in his grave. God bless him. Her father was a pious preacher. <laughs> May God save you from those demons. Go and be at ease. Give me a haven. Your tears say much more than your words. You may accompany us if you wish. Jesus, please be kind and tell us who you are. Please tell us so we may then be able to tell our superiors. Are you Elijah? Or Jeremiah? or any of the ancient prophets. Please, tell us that we may give testimony to those awaiting. I am the voice that cries through all Judea. I am the voice that cries, Prepare ye the way for the messenger of the Lord, as it is written in Isaiah. If you are not Elijah or Jeremiah, why do you make yourself of more account than the Messiah? Tell us who you are, what these miracles are. 
Miracles that you have seen worked by my hand shows that I speak that which Almighty God wills. But I do not make myself to be more accounted than him. He who was made before me and shall come after me and shall bring the words of truth so that his faith shall not know any end. The chiefs and elders seek occasion against me. Jesus, therefore go not again into Solomon's temple. I shall suffer many persecutions, as have suffered all the holy ones and prophets of Almighty God. There be some with us but also some who are against us. So the children of Israel were ousted from their throne of magnificence. And our sacred land was trampled by the infidels. Without a doubt, we are close to God's judgment day. It is mentioned in the scripture that the last king shall be a tyrant. An infidel, a pagan ruler, and that his children shall be worse. So the children of Israel shall lose the crown. O oh, people, I tell you, the despot, pagan king has come. Do you know who he was? The lowly Herod, who called himself the Great. And you know his useless children, Philip and Herodias. Why did I tell you that? So that you will know the prophecies and predictions of the past prophets have been realized. He's here. Look, He's it's here. the son of Mary. He's finally here. That's him. Mary. I'm telling you, it's the son of Mary. He's been here. waiting so long. What's all the commotion, Excellency? The Nazarene has come with his gang. The Nazarene? Mm -hmm. The prophet of hooligans. Again, they've entered the arena of the temple. Oh, Jesus, for the sake of the Holy Scripture, tell me who you are. I'm a voice that cries through all Judea. Prepare ye the way for the messenger of the Lord. Even as it is written, in Isaiah, the prophet. Before anything else, he must explain to the pilgrims why he speaks against the priesthood and against the servants of Moses. His Excellency Reuben is rebuking him. I will tell you that we do not care what the laymen say about you in town, but I'm sure you are aware the punishment that awaits any who insult the holy priesthood. I'm sure you know about that. Verily I say, I speak against those who would be hypocrites, 
Tell us, Nazarene, who is a hypocrite? Go ahead. I say to you that he who does a good thing, purely that men may see, is a hypocrite. He who with his tongue serves God, yet with his heart serves men. Surely he doesn't think that he can say whatever he wants here. O oh, believer pilgrims, listen! This man, this man, is Satan's accomplice. Right. He is Satan himself. Woe betide you hypocrite priests and Pharisees. Every one of you is a hypocrite because you close the doors to the kingdom of God on the people. You do not enter it, nor do you allow others to. He can't say that. He must be punished. Not yet. We mustn't do anything without Kaifa's decree. You bow to Torah's words, but you violate its meaning. Justice, benevolence, faith. Where are they? You are like an adorned tomb, white on the outside, but within is full of corruption and worms. Excellency, he's inciting a revolution. He's dangerous, that I know. The temple of God is a place of prayer and worship, not a place to extract money like thieves. Take a look at these stones. Everybody, look at them. I warn you, not even one stone shall stand on another. They shall all collapse. Did I hear right? Did he call us temple priests thieves? He means the money changes, stands. You serpents! You shall never see me here again, unless you shout out, Blessed is the one who is born in the name of Almighty God. I am indeed the messenger of Almighty God. He mustn't instigate people against the money changers. That is how we make all our money. We must watch him very closely. This rebel is many times more dangerous than the Romans or the Zealots. Today is the Sabbath. Doing anything is forbidden on the Sabbath. If he tries to do anything, we'll hit him with the holiness of the Sabbath. I ask, O oh woman, that you raise your head in the name of our God, so these people may see that I speak the truth, and he wills that I announce it. People, I tell you, he is not sent of God. See, he doesn't even keep the Sabbath. That's right, that's right. The religion of Moses tells us not to do anything on the day of Sabbath. We should keep the Sabbath by going to the temple and by worshiping and praying to our God on that holy day. He broke the sanctity of the Sabbath. Is it not lawful to speak on the Sabbath and pray for the salvation of others? And who among you, if on the Sabbath your donkey fell into a ditch, would not pull him out again? We must think of a solution to this now. Hmm. Divide them. We'll divide them. Create disunity like the Romans have. And have I broken the Sabbath by healing a daughter of Jacob? It is in this that your hypocrisy is revealed. How many there are who fear an ant, yet not an elephant? <laughs> 